Welcome to TMI, a podcast by Henry Ford Allegiance Health. Today, we have Jen here. Hey, Jen. How you Hello. Doing? Hi, Dave. I'm good. Oh, boy. I'm so excited. So excited. Um, we're going to be talking about a lot of things. So people who haven't heard this podcast before, we're all on our own health journey. But yeah. in the marketing and communications department here, um, we have a bunch of people who are really interested in making themselves better and yeah. um, just becoming more healthy. Mm-hmm. So as a department, we decided to do something about it. And we are creating this podcast to not only help people out there, but to help ourselves a little bit. Exactly. Um, become more healthy. And we have a unique opportunity where we can interview some of the best and brightest doctors around. Really so, lucky. yeah, it's pretty cool. One thing we want to talk about, though, is that this is just information. If you need specific medical advice, please consult your own doctor or physician for more information. Um, so today, Jen, we have a really cool topic. We what are do. we talking about? So today we have uh, Dr. Mbani with us. She is um, a reconstructive and plastic surgeon here at Henry Ford Allegiance Health. And we're just going to sit down and kind of talk about just some questions that we have and uh yeah, and see see what we can find out. So thanks for being here today, Dr. Mbani. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do? What does a plastic surgeon do? We do quite a bit. Actually, a lot more than people think. Oh, nice. <laughs> Some folks think that all we do is cosmetic surgery, and we do quite a bit of it. And I think it's actually quite fun, you know, facelifts and nose jobs, boob jobs. Um, but we also do a lot of reconstructive surgery, and that's actually a bulk of what we do just because mm-hmm. um, it's a very important part to uh, healing the community. Yep, absolutely. So the reconstructive side is going to be more someone who may be recovering from a cancer surgery or had a car accident or something like that. Exactly. Correct? Okay, exactly. Awesome. Yeah. So we use the principles um the same principles to do both cosmetic surgery and reconstructive surgery because we can operate from head to toe on any body part. Um, we had to figure out how to put things back together. So a lot of things overlap. How in depth do you does reconstructive surgery get? Is it really complicated? Like what are some of the things that it you could do? be? It could be. I mean, it could be as easy as you know, if it's a if it's a wound, say mm-hmm. there's a dog bite to the face mm-hmm. or the nose, mm-hmm. um, I would have to figure out what pieces I have left, what I can sew back together. If there needs to be some skin or some cartilage or uh, things like that to um, reconstruct it, then I would have to figure that out basically. Um, so that c- that's on the less complex side. On um, the more complex side would be something like a motorcycle accident where a large part of bone is exposed, mm. for example, and I have to transplant um, a muscle from your back all the way to your foot. Wow. So um, it could be very simple or it could be more complex like that. <laughs> yeah, I have my fair share of battle scars and I know <laughs> it can be so complicated or like not only is it like an, a science, but it's an art to mm. put these things back together in just the right way where it I looks like to natural. think so. <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fun to use your creativity, um, but also to use your basic principles, you know, principles of anatomy and tissue healing and um, all, all the things I learned in doctor school. That's mm-hmm. important stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So if I was considering to have a little something done, what does an initial consultation with you look like? Like, what can I expect? Well, you make a phone call, and then we have you come in. <laughs> okay. And then we try to make you at ease because a lot of folks uh, tend to be a little apprehensive and embarrassed mm-hmm. sometimes of being there because they don't want to be known to get plastic surgery or right. want plastic surgery. Mm-hmm. Um, so we try to keep them at ease, and then they come in, and we just have a conversation. Okay. We like to know. Um, I like to know what you'd want, what your goals are, and how you want to get there. We want to be more invasive, less invasive, if we want to have something that's really visible afterwards or something that's very subtle. So I try to get a sense of what the patient wants in the end. Awesome. That's cool. For most of the procedures that you do, are these like you have to be in the hospital for days at a time, or what kind of 
It really depends. It really depends because we do all types of procedures from the simplest ones, such as skin lesion excisions, like the that mole on your lip or oh. that mole right on your eyelid or that little cyst that just keeps on popping. Sure. We can take those out and um, hide the scars. Or we do the biggest reconstructive surgeries you can think of, such as transplanting your abdominal tissue and hooking it up to the artery and vein in your chest wow. and recreating a breast after a mastectomy, for example. Wow. So um, depending on the size of the surgery, it depends. Um, then uh, uh, you can either be outpatient or it could be a long inpatient stay. Awesome. Hmm. So for the cosmetic side, insurance is typically not going to cover that. Is that correct? That's typically correct. Okay. <laughs> yeah. For the cosmetic side, um, because it's considered enhancement and it's not okay. absolutely necessary for functional activities of daily living, uh, then the patient would have to pay out of pocket. Gotcha. And that makes sense. Yeah, you know. it does. Yeah. Absolutely. But if someone were in a car accident or is recovering from mm -hmm. cancer, you know, then those are usually going to be covered by insurance. Right. Because that's okay. considered reconstructive surgery. Gotcha. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. I think the coolest thing about plastic surgery is that um, uh, is that we get to put things back together, mm -hmm. whether it's for enhancement or for reconstruction. And so um, if a person is unhappy with their appearance because of just normal facial aging and the effects of gravity, we can hike things up back to where they belong. <laughs> <laughs> As we and, get older, we right, might all need right. that. Or um, un uh, unfortunately, if a patient has cancer, for example, and they have to have something excised, or uh, we can figure out what kind of tissue they might have to put things back together and make them feel whole again. Wow, so. that's pretty amazing. It's yeah. a it's a rewarding job. <laughs> yeah, I bet. That's really neat. So Dave yeah. might not be ready to commit to surgery. Does yeah. he <laughs> potentially? Dave, have? what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> what oh, are you boy. looking for? <laughs> oh boy, TMI. Um, <laughs> That's why we named the show this. Yeah. Um, well, you know, you always have something that, like, you either if it's a little scar somewhere or whatever, mm -hmm. that you're not quite ready to commit to. So, what are some of the things, some of the less invasive? Yeah, less mm -hmm. invasive options are just like basic things people can do mm -hmm. to kind of take care of their skin or slightly improve their appearance. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, everyone is different. Everyone has a different skin topography and different, a little bit different anatomy. So I definitely have to see each patient in person to really see what they would need. So if they have a scar and if that scar is raised and red and um, itchy, uh, then they could be candidates for a steroid injection, for example. Or if that scar, for example, is um, not doesn't have those features and uh, is wide and ugly and um, may require excision, then they would need something surgical. So mm -hmm. it really would depend on where the scar is, what the features are, and yeah. what the patient's um, overall goal is. So I can't exactly tell you, yeah. um, but for some non-invasive options just to make someone feel better or look more uh, look better or feel more confident about themselves there are many things such as botox or fillers or okay. um, other injectable type of items so we'll just have to talk about those options based on each patient's individual right. characteristics and those are all things that you offer as part of a service mm -hmm. yeah. and you know um, we actually have a wonderful dermatology department right upstairs from our our oh. suite um, and they also love doing non-surgical uh, yeah. um, non-surgical procedures mm, cool. awesome and where are you guys located we are on spring arbor road um, okay. so right down the street yeah cool and I think I saw, don't you guys have like a newsletter where you've got like some specials and stuff that you do on right. some of the less invasive options? Yes. Okay, yes. awesome. It's called Cascading Beauty. You'll have to take a look. Perfect. Cool. Well, thanks for joining us today. This was really insightful. And it was. I, I, I like this topic. I, I do too. I didn't think I'd like it as much as I did, but <laughs> nice. you know, it's really cool. Why yeah. not? Plastic surgery well, is fun. <laughs> I'm looking, it's interesting. You know how much yeah. plastic surgery is on TV? I yeah. I don't know. But it's addictive. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm like a a dude, so like. 
You did did you, you know, um, Ashley, statistically, more men are turning to plastic surgery these days. Are really? they really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. What kinds you of things do, are they having done? Oh, you can do tons of things. You can get things like mm, liposculpture. You can mm. uh, liposculpt some abs in there. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, you can get some calf implants or pec implants, uh -huh. chin implants. Wow. Um, things that are, you know, I guess they could be subtle or less subtle, but right. yeah. um, just for enhancement. So I nobody think has to know. No one has to know. Nice. That's really interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Well, if you're out for a week or so, Dave, well, yeah, <laughs> well, I might, you know, you never know. Awesome. <laughs> cool. Well, uh, if you are interested in finding out more about this podcast, we are online on Facebook, Henry Ford Allegiance Health. Um, we also have this podcast listed in all of the podcast places, iTunes, Anchor, Wherever you find podcasts, this will be there. Um, and we are going to try and do some shows at least once a month, hopefully every other week, bringing in some extremely knowledgeable doctors and professionals to talk about the topics that interest us yeah. um, and hopefully interest you. If you have questions, feel free to add them in the comments or send us a message on Facebook with topics that you would like to, us to discuss. Mm -hmm. And we will be happy to talk about that. Yeah. So thanks for joining us. Thanks again, Dr. Mbani. It was great to see you. It was a pleasure. Thank you.